from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Winner of the 2017 Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Best Education Show, Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 75. In episode 74, we interviewed the producer and host of a TV program entitled Getaway Girl. Regina Eyre shared her trip to Africa that she took with the National Geographic Society and her encounters with chimpanzees and gorillas. Now, during the production of that episode, we learned of the passing of Coco the gorilla. Coco learned to communicate with researchers using sign language. Now, for once, we had at least a small answer to the question of what these large apes are thinking. Coco is best remembered for communicating a very human-like emotion. Researchers working with Coco demonstrated that gorillas had emotions that they could express. Coco expressed sadness at the loss of a kitten that was Coco's pet. Now, the opening of the revolutionary idea that other animals were bound to have feelings as well, we owe Coco a great deal for opening the emotional life of animals to the awareness of humans, many of whom found it convenient to assume that animals had no emotion. My emotions turned to sadness at the loss of Coco. Beginning with episode 33, we've been using the unit on animals to model and practice higher levels of English. We've also encouraged viewers to research and report on an animal. In this episode, we review that project and refer viewers to the episodes where the report topics were taught. Let's get right to work on the review. Let's look at the topics that should be included in a report on an animal. You'll want to describe the subject of your report. You'll want to show how your subject is classified and which group of animals does it belong. The range and distribution of your animal, where does it live? The habitat, what kind of area supports the life of your chosen animal? Now your report should include the diet of your animal. What does it eat and where does it fall in the tropic levels? You want to report on the animal's reproduction, its mating, and how it cares for its young. Be sure to report on the animal's physical and behavior adaptations. The, con the um, conservation status of your animal should also be addressed, and some special things about your animal in your animal report. Now, as I recently stated on our unit in animals, uh, that began with episode 33, which introduced our unit with a look at horses. We didn't announce the project to research an animal until much later, but we began describing farm animals in episode 40. Plus, we began using farm animals as a starting point for describing wild animals in episode 43. Episode 50 goes deeper into description skills. Now here are some of the concepts we developed over several episodes to describe the animal you're researching. If your subject is in some way similar to a domesticated animal, you can point that out. Domesticated animals are likely to be familiar to a reader or listener to which you're communicating. Now features like size and color and body parts helps form an image or picture in the mind of those who report or hear your report. Now, distinguishing physical features like the trunk of an elephant further support that mental picture. 
If the body or body part could, corresponds to a basic geometric shape, say so. You'll also find words like wide, pointed, massive, skinny, short, tall, wrinkled, and other descriptive words helpful. When it comes to classification, that information is fairly easy to come by. All animals are classified as either vertebrates or invertebrates. The vertebrates have backbones. Vertebrates are, dis are divided into major classifications of fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, depending on the number of traits in combination. Now, if you're in elementary or middle school, this may be as far as you need to go in classifying your subject. If you're in secondary or post-secondary, you may need to go further in classifying your animal. For some detailed classification, these wildlife cards list information at the top of the card, including the order, family, genus, and species. An article in an encyclopedia or on Wikipedia would have the same information. Now for those basic classification levels, this book, Record Setting Animals, has small cards on some of these amazing animals and they're grouped by basic classification, fish, reptiles, mammals, birds. They list a few facts about the animals on the back of the card. Now you may need to review our lesson on basic classification. That's episode 53. It features a step-by-step -step process in determining the classification of the animal you've decided to research. Visit letscreate.org and navigate to the episode 53 page. You can watch the episode there or just review the learning materials used in that episode. Now in your report, you'll also want to show where your animal lives. Now this is the range of the animal. Notice the geographic terms in this listing. If you're not familiar with terms like tropical and subtropical, you can still find the countries listed here. Now one fun way to become familiar with the location of countries and states is to put together a map puzzle. Now that's what Will Wass and his friends did with the United States map after performing at RVTV Studios. The bee makes some honey. Um, the tree and then the bear eats the honey from the hive. Oh, they're double sided! Oh, they're double sided! Which We're side do you want to do? Oh, they're double sided! I'd make, I'd make one's the globe and one's the United States. So let's no, do no, the, it's this main or not. One's the Those globe and one's the United States. That one's the globe. Oh, well, mangoes. No, here. this is the globe. Oh, mangoes. Oh, no, wait, what? what this is, is the globe. Oh, this is the globe. See? What's this? this Argentina. Okay, wait. Yeah, that's the United States. Yeah, one side's the. Uh, what is Because look, Atlantic Ocean. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No. Um, wait, guys, no. Okay, try to find look at these the one pieces. Look guys, the back. guys, try to find yeah. these pieces. Uh, do the front only. Front. Hey, um, those two pieces. Um, uh, oh, oh, I have the United States. Okay, the United States, States is together. Okay. Of the 13 I've got Nevada. colonies. Nevada. Nevada? Hey, who wants to sing the song of this in 50 states? I don't know the song. Oh, 50 nifty United States of the 13 original colonies. Shout them, scout them, tell all about them. One by one. Into the blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Kyle, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico,
Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Florida, Island, South Carolina, Something. Rogue Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Ooh, here's where we live. Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. Help me if you find Nevada. Oh, I got this. Nevada. I didn't even Nevada. realize I got this. Nevada. Nimpa, I got this. Now that's learning the fun way. You might also enjoy looking at an atlas. If you like maps, you'll love an atlas. It's a collection of maps.